Uh, thanks for asking me to do this talk. Uh, Banshi really went in absolute fast track. I think I'm not going to go in a fast track. Yeah, you, you had so many slides. Well, this is the standards of care. Now, what is important to realize is that you have diagrams like this, which is trying to clearly tell us that you need to assess the key patient characteristics. And the psychological issues that I will be talking about actually comes in this. Just take a minute of your time. Let's just read this slowly because it, it makes a huge impact and a difference. The diabetes management may include positive screening for overall stress related to work-life balance, diabetes distress, diabetes management difficulties, depression, anxiety, disordered eating, cognitive dysfunction, among other issues. It's preferable to incorporate psychological assessment and treatment into routine care. Now, this is what the ADA says. Bring it into the routine care. And assessment for symptoms of diabetes, distress, depression, anxiety, disordered eating, cognitive capacities. You have questionnaires which are available. Only thing is it has to be validated for India. I think Dr. A.K. Das has done a lot of work on depression and diabetes. This quality of life questionnaire we need to now evolve. India is such a different country. Every 100 kilometers it changes. So we need to make it specifically for our own group of patients. And if you are looking at elderly patients more than 65, I think you need to look for cognitive impairment and depression also. Let's just take diabetes distress. I am not going to be talking about psychiatric illnesses for which you actually need a psychiatrist to treat. Now, diabetes distress is very common and distinct from other psychological disorders. It just refers to significant negative psychological reactions related to emotional burdens and worries specific to an individual's experience in having to manage a severe, complicated, demanding chronic disease like diabetes. Well, the prevalence varies. There are high levels of diabetes distress significantly has an impact on the medication behavior, of course, on the higher ABA1C and low self-efficacy. Well, we, we know as clinicians that these are the problems that our patients are finding. Because of this, for the last couple of years, behavioral therapy is here to stay. And this is something that we have to take it up as physicians. What is normal behavior? This is only for somebody who is taking an examination. I don't think we really need this. Normal behavior, especially if you are sitting as a delegate and listening to lecture, is not to look at your mobile phones and to be making something. But all the ladies in the front row do not have a normal behavior. This is a mobile behavior. OK, so I, I was just talking about a normal behavior. Anything not accepted by the society is an abnormal behavior. But in each area, this can change from time to time. OK? I'm sorry about making that comment to the ladies, but everybody is so busy looking at how many likes they have on the Facebook, because they all had posted their photographs today. Uh, types of behavior. Again, we are not taking an examination. We can actually skip this slide. Overt, covert, conscious, unconscious, rational, irrational. You know, we go through all this. Let's look at this slide. Now, what is the impact of a chronic disease at diagnosis? What exactly is happening to my patient? First thing is feeling of loss of pleasure, reduced quality of life. This morning, I was talking to Dr. JJ, who is now sitting in the front seat. He said, the very existence of the human race, people think that they are born actually to enjoy life, to have pleasures, procreate, and probably die one day is exactly what all of us feel. I mean, there's not much more to that, but this is exactly what we feel. And among all the animals, JJ also went on to say that humans are the only one who have desire for more than what is actually necessary for survival. Very true. I mean, coming from a wise man like JJ, I, I really appreciate you, you talking to me about it. So these are the feelings that our patients have, feeling of guilt. Compulsion to follow lifestyle changes, loss of freedom, fear of complications. This back to school is something that I have heard so many times. 
everybody becomes an advisor at home including the grandchild the moment it starts to speak okay <coughs> dadi you are not eating on time dadi you took sweets you know everybody becomes an advisor and people start hating that they the compulsion to do mistake comes because they don't want here everybody telling them apart from the doctors and the cost of the treatment yes it's it's an important significant thing so understanding the mindset among individuals with chronic illness is vital for targeting interventions that can increase their longevity improve quality of life now my question simple question is okay fine the text says understanding the mindset now what is mind can somebody just raise their hand and tell me what is mind according to them can jj tell me or shirpa tell me what is mind ek eda sir you are the senior most so what is mind this was my simple question sir what is mind okay that's one philosophical answer but let's just look at what mind is just a bundle of thoughts it's not an organ in fact i myself was amazed when i was actually preparing these slides <coughs> mind is like a butterfly that flies from one flower to another never standing still mind is like a boiling water which never rests if you are very distressed it's a boiling water and experts say think 60 to 80000 thoughts a day remarkable that's an average of 2500 to 3300 thoughts per hour now i must tell dr banshi here with 2500 to 3300 thoughts per hour if he can patent some of his thoughts and sell it he can be a very rich man in no time i mean just think about it so many thoughts coming we have never bothered to actually patent them why do you think there are so many ad board meetings happening it is for our thoughts to be shared okay but uh, well it doesn't make us rich in no time but then it does make us rich and this is this is the mind and of course there is gross and subtle mind well chashank has joined me in the front row and then uh, i know he is can be very philosophical we can go on discussing about the gross mind and the subtle mind just important to tell you that i'll not go into the details of this because this becomes very complicated the gross mind remember stops when once this body stops the subtle mind which underpins the five senses provides to the very subtle mind some people believe some people do not believe in that but the important thing is what we typically call the mind is not one thing but actually a compilation of functions we have known this kama artha dharma and the moksha everything that we do for pleasure wealth morality whatever may be the reason it is to get happiness the pleasure somebody may do it for pure pleasure having a drink this evening with jj is for pure pleasure conducting a conference probably for you know neeta and uh, sanjay probably is a, a, a social reward they love it somebody is working very hard to earn wealth but that's also for happiness you're doing some work as dharma that also gives you happiness so finally everything that we do through this mind is for this happiness so we'll not go to moksha that becomes a problem so mind harvests several feelings three important things to remember anger hunger and desires are very very difficult to control and this is what we need to control and every human being has this in abundance anger hunger desires the moment you start controlling these three rest of it becomes extremely easier something for jj and banshi conscious mind is only about 10% subconscious mind is 90% <clears throat> just yesterday i googled to k uh, googled to know 
what percentage of subconscious mind is used and i was amazed to find the best of the nobel laureates and scientists have used only 4% of their subconscious mind okay now they are trying to see what if we start using 10 12 20% of the subconscious mind so literally what we are using is only the conscious mind and your subconscious mind is 30000 times more powerful i mean don't look at that book my daughter doesn't like it but i i liked it when i started reading about these things so it's it's important to know that the subconscious mind has a lot of functions if you can tap the thoughts from your subconscious mind it becomes very easy to control our emotions so the mind control is complicated at one level from the time we are born we start training our mind it can be through what we hear and see and through introspection with education experience environment around us knowledge meditation and most importantly samskara or the karma so these are the things that actually helps you to control your mind and it is complicated and all these things have a role to play so it's not that you cannot take a terrorist and overnight try to convert his mind some scientists have tried to do it but it may be very difficult so a number of things have to start very early in life so when you are seeing a patient if he is continuously making mistakes the first reaction is oh i did everything i told this patient to do this i told that to do that still the patient is not doing remember you need to have a lot of patience changing somebody's mindset is not all that easy again a look at what all is happening to the patient when he has diabetes we don't really feel it because we know that this is what the patient is going through a very simple example we have a number of tools now in our hospital because we have a psychologist now sitting with a set of patients and in patients there's a beautiful ship sailing so much of water nothing happens one negative thought can be like this wave of water enough to sink the ship so the faster we take out the negative thoughts away from our mind and start converting anything negative into positive i think our life starts to change when i get into my car the first thing i try to see is whether there is fuel is the tire pressure okay whether the music system is on is the ac working all that because if the car doesn't work that day i can't go to work so when somebody can take that much of care about the car the body which is like a car which is actually driving your entire life is not being taken care of so it is the mind who has to act like a driver and the body is the car and you just have to take care of it in real life what is happening is there is hope versus reality we have a lot of hopes that this is what has to happen okay but then in reality it is different the moment you understand that hope always cannot be the reality i think we start changing in an effort to have a better tomorrow all of us here are forgetting to live today we we are chasing some mirages we are chasing wealth we are chasing those social things okay we paint castles desire to excel we chase unrealistic targets and we love social rewards and crave for it how much of time have we lost on the facebook i don't know but that's a social reward you would love to do it because when somebody says hey i liked your post then that's a social reward you feel good about it you want your mind to feel good about it so you move on doing it so anything that that brings a little composure to your mind you want to do it what we have to tell our patient is of course they can't change their parents and genes but they could have probably modified the risk factors before they became diabetics educate patients to accept adopt and adjust to changes so there are a lot of education tools we need to have a workshop to talk about it well these are some of the points that one needs to do but the important thing to remember is i think we must teach our patients to drop all the negative thoughts if you want to take away the diabetic distress there are a few examples a few tools which i will just show now well 
Slides like this are shown to them when we are teaching that when you can't change the direction of the wind, just adjust the sails. Well, it makes sense to many of them. Now, I will ask this to Shilpa here. Children have exams. There's a party going on in your neighbor's house. There's a loud music. Please, madam, what is your reaction? That's, that's, that's a very polite way of requesting them, but they don't listen. They're all youngsters. They're having a party. Okay. Anything else? What, what, what else can be the reaction? Oh, others? From the chairperson? Go join them. See, we, we face situations like this every day. What should be the right reaction when there is a problem like this? Thank you very much. You are, you are going to grow miles. I think this is something that we need to do. There is no need to do worry about it. Let me be peaceful. Noise cancelling headphones. Let me continue to do my studies. You will get your PhD in less than two years. Don't worry. Don't worry. You are going to get that. Now, this is a second example to the ladies in this hall. You have planned a fantastic party and the maid has not come to work. I would really like to know from the ladies. No, there's a lot of work to be done at home. Not just the food part of it. Lot of work. Maid has not come. Okay, there, there can be different answers. There can be hundreds of answers. But the usual thing is you lose your temper when the maid doesn't come. You know, the choicest of the galis are given always in front of the husband. You pamper her, you give her extra money, you do this. That's why she has done this. Now you do that. I don't know why it comes on the husband, but it always comes on the husbands at home. Easy target. Yeah, safe targets. We are like the cows which just says yes. Or sometimes we are like the food truck, you know, anything can be cleaned on the food truck. Okay. I think the simplest thing is to switch on some music that you love. <laughs> just, she has not come, she is not going to come. The situation is not going to change. So just understand the situation, it's not going to change. Only thing you have is instead of shouting and then doing all the work, just switch on some music. Please do your homework. I mean, it's the wrong picture. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the wrong picture. I should have put someone else's picture. But it, it yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, there'll be this much smiling, but at least the idea is, well, if you can't change the sequence, do this. So last two slides. Important to remember in any human's life, the thoughts create the feelings and the feelings create the behavior and the behaviors reinforce the thoughts. Now, whatever you are teaching them for distress, let's remember one thing. It's a very busy world. People, from the time they get up, the last thing that they have in their mind is about their body. They're literally running place like Bombay, Bangalore, etc. You have to get up, take bath, get ready. Children have to get ready to go to school, do something to the in-laws, parents, etc. And then you are off to work. And then Either you are a boss to somebody or a subordinate to somebody, then you try to come back. So you are doing multiple things in a day. If you are a lady, then your wife on one side, a daughter on the other side, daughter-in-law on the other side, mother on the other side. So it is a difficult world outside. So we need to balance our mind to actually stay normal. It's not easy, especially if you have diabetes. Taking care of the body is the last thing in mind. So you feel you are totally lost and there is something lost. So whatever you teach them, however good they are in educated, there is going to be relapses. Whenever there is a relapse, reinforcement. And we know from animal studies, reinforcement works, rewards work. This is something that you can always start doing. Accept, adopt, adjust. This is going to be the only mantra in your behavioral therapy. Well, you can do it yourself or it would be ideal to teach one of your colleagues to be doing this. Usually those with a psychology background are the best people to do this. So diabetes care team is getting extended. Now you have mental health also which has come in. 
And in years to come, trust me, I think this will play a big role in trying to see that our patients are better. So positive thinking is one thing that you need to work on and that is the mantra in behavioral therapy. If there is a long road called life with diabetes, it's not full of rose petals. Trust me, the road has a lot of stones and obstacles. You can ask a patient or teach them to wear the right shoes to avoid stones. You can always tell him, I will teach you the ways to overcome obstacles, but I cannot take the stone from inside your shoes if there is one. Accept, adopt, adjust to the healthy lifestyle with diabetes. And of course, we can tell them that life can always be sweet without sugar. So, this is something we need to do. We, we are very good in writing insulins, OHAs, talking about diet, exercise and all that. But one area in which we have failed is spending a little time to know what exactly is causing them the problem. So I think diabetes distress is something that we need to look to. Positive thinking, I think, is going to be the mantra in behavioral therapy. Thanks, Neeta. Thanks, Sanjay, for actually giving me this topic. Thank you so very much.